Okay, let's look at something like this. Okay, let's look at a hard completing the square problem. Maybe we'll, we'll at least set up a hard quadratic formula problem. Okay, so something like this. We want exact simplified solutions. Okay, let's talk about this. Get back into math mode here. What, what are we going to do? Clear the fractions. Clear the fractions, good. So what do we multiply both sides through by? Four. Four, good. Okay, so if we multiply four all the way through both sides, what are we going to get? Six X, okay. How do we get the six? No, not four times three divided by two. Four divided by two times three. Four divided by two times three, right? It doesn't make much difference this time, but in the future it will, right? Whenever you're clearing fractions, always reduce first. So four over two is two times the top, right? Okay, so six X plus two equals Okay, next step. Okay, get everything to one side. And we're going to solve this by completing the square. So maybe we can even just slightly adjust that. It's not a big deal, but when we, when we complete the square, where do we want the constant to sit? A on A and B on the left side and C on the left side. Okay, good, right. We want the constant on the right and then A and B on the left. Okay, so if we subtract X, we're going to get what? 4X squared plus 5x, and then we'll subtract 2 and get negative 5, right? Okay, so this is, this is about as hard as it gets for completing the square. What, what are we going to do here? We, the, the left side doesn't look, correct, doesn't look right yet. Good, I've got to get it in the form. Remember, my goal here is I've got to get this into the form. Uh, whoops, sorry. x squared plus bx equals c, right? So I've got to divide through by whatever the coefficient is, even if it's just negative 1, right? It's got, I have to have a coefficient of 1 to complete the square. That's the best, well, I mean, that's the, by far the best way to do it. So if we divide everything through by 4, what are we going to get on the left side? There's my x squared plus 5 fourths x, leave a space, right, because we're going to have to add something to both sides, equals negative, negative 5 fourths. Good. Okay, so now here's where I want to kind of go back, and it's been a while, right? It's been like a week at least since we've looked at any of this stuff. So before we add this number here, I really think what's, what's probably the next step here? We can set up a template, right, before we start adding, substituting numbers. What's going to go on the next line? X plus the okay, good. Think about this. Our, our goal here, the whole purpose of doing this, is for us to create a perfect square trinomial, right, that we know is going to factor into x plus or, or minus some number squared, right? And that's just going to equal some number on this side. And from there, it's easy. Then we just isolate x. Then the steps are always the same, and it's no big deal. All right, so where do we want to go first? What's the first blank we want to plug in? Yeah, good. So we know right here, we know what the number is going to be inside that factor, right? It's always going to be what? Half of B. Yeah, half of B. So that's what's, what's half of 5 fourths. Probably the easiest way to think of it is half of something is one half times something. 5 eighths. Good. So we get x plus 5 eighths quantity squared. Good. So then that informs the next blanks that I fill in. So what's going to go there? Plus 25 sixty fourths. Yeah, good. Whatever that number is squared, right? So we're going to go plus 25 sixty fourths. 
and then I just need to know what all that adds up to, right? <coughs> so if I want to combine like terms there, what do I have to do? To I have to get a common denominator, obviously. What's that going to be? Uh, 64. 64. Good. So I'll multiply this fraction by, what's that going to be, 16 over 16? Yes. And I get, uh, what's that, 80 minus 80? over 64, and so what's that end up being? I got 25 minus 80 over 64, right? Everybody following this? Does that make sense? Okay, so uh, 55, 55 64ths, okay? And that that's the end, end of the road for completing the square. Now I just go back and, and solve for x. Right. This, what are the two steps in order to solve for x? Always the same. Square root, and then yeah, well, I just, I just got to add you know the opposite of that to both sides, right? To get the x by itself. Those steps will always be the same. So now we end up with to get the x by itself, x plus five eighths equals plus or minus. Plus or minus. The square root of negative 55 sixty-fourths. Okay, good. So we're going to get I times the square root. And I can split top and bottom, right? Yeah. Times the square root of 55 over the square root of 64, which is what? Eight. Eight. Good. So we okay with that? Is 55, <coughs> is the square root of 55 going to be... Something we can simplify further? No. Uh-uh. No, what are the only factors of 55? Five and 11. Five and 11, both are prime, right? So then this this side is simplified. What's the last step? Subtract five eighths. Yeah. So I just end up with x equals negative 5 eighths <laughs> plus or minus. The square root of 55 eighths times i, right? And so in Moodle, I'd have to just write that as two, you know, two separate solutions separated by a comma. But those are in the correct form. Those are in standard form too, aren't they? In the form a plus b i and a minus b i, right? Okay. That's the hardest. I can't imagine a harder completing the square problem. So if you can do that, you can do anything. Yeah. So like, is there going to be those questions on the test where That is the exact question. But like there is there are a couple questions on the assignment where you have to get like a single number. I'm not sure. I mean like if this was on the assignment, I probably want to have gone through that blue step. I would have just stuck with negative fifty five over sixty four. That's key assignment that you did. Well that's 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 an earlier assignment. But this this is in this assignment it asks you to actually solve the equation. So you're trying to solve for x, right? So, so you got so th now, now let's let's go back and look at this kind of big picture. What we do, let's let's review this process. So everything from here, so this this is our starting point right here, right? Everything from there down to here, that's just completing the square, right? But then that, that's the hard part. But then from there on down, all we're doing there is just solving it. Pretty easy quadratic equation. Th and remember what the strategy is. I know sometimes in math, and especially with a class like this, where I give you guys some hard problems to do, uh, you get mired down in just the algebra. But but don't lose sight of the big picture. The whole point of completing the square, remember, is to take a problem that has, you know, x squareds and x's, right? So it's not amenable to isolating x, right? Because I I, I can't point at a single x and therefore isolate it, but Completing the square rewrites that equation in a way where I can point at a single x, which means I can just reverse order of operations and isolate. So that that's the that's our strategy here is to turn this into an easy problem to solve instead of having to deal with it as a as a quadratic with you know with x squareds and x's, right? Okay. I want you to know how to do that by completing the square. I still prefer this to the quadratic formula, 
I mean, if I had to, like, if I were in the midst of doing a big physics problem and I had to solve a quadratic equation, I would complete the square before I would try to put stuff into the quadratic formula. I just feel like it makes the simplification process a little bit easier. You may feel differently, but that's okay. So, um, so there's that one, right? Let's look at one. Let's look at one here. Okay, the discriminant. The discriminant's no big deal, right? What's the discriminant? Good. What's in the radical and the quadratic formula? So I'll just pick the hardest one I can out of this. This is no big deal. If you're looking at a problem like this, just by inspection, look at that, look at that parabola there. How many zeros does it have? Two. Two. So therefore the discriminant has to have how many has to have what value? The sign is going to be what? Positive. Guaranteed. Because it's got two real solutions. It has two zeros, right? Uh, so the quadratic formula would have two real solutions and zero complex solutions with imaginary parts, right? Make sense? Okay. So what's one that would have Okay, so let's look at that. So how, what's that one going to be? Uh, zero. zero. No, no. How many one. zeros does that have? It has one, doesn't it? it has one zero, one real solution. So therefore, it, it's going to have no complex solutions because it has a real solution, right? And what's the value of the, I should I guess say value, but it's, we're really looking for the sign. No, it's going to be zero. Yeah, okay. Compare that to this guy. Okay, now this one has how many zeros? None of them. So that means it's got to be a negative discriminant, right? Which means how many real solutions? Well, zero. How many complex solutions with imaginary parts? Two. Two. Okay, and then so you can't, you can't, and we'll talk about that within the context of when we start to to ramp this up a little bit and talk about higher polynomials. Something I'll just give you a little heads up on this. Something that we're going to find this is the fundamental theorem of algebra tells us that that complex solutions always come, and you maybe have even recognized this, they always come in complex conjugate pairs. They always come in pairs. You can never have an odd number of complex solutions with imaginary parts. They're always going to come in pairs. Okay, yeah. Question? Okay. Uh, and then, so the other ones in here are same kinds of questions, but they're just the ones where you're just going to take, you're going to take a quadratic equation and fill in the answers to, you know, what's the sign of the discriminant and therefore how many real solutions does it have? So this one, we don't really need to find out what the value of the discriminant, just the sign. So b squared minus 4ac is going to be 8 squared minus 4 times 1 times 16, right? Well, that's 64 minus 64, so it's 0, right? Uh, let's pick a different one, one that's more. Like, how about that? So b squared minus 4ac this time, you, can you already kind of see it's going to be negative? Because b squared is pretty small, it's 16, but 4ac is going to be a big positive number that you're subtracting from that, right? So you don't have to, we don't, I don't care what it is, it makes no difference. I just know, I can tell right away that it's going to be negative, right? Which means it's got zero real solutions, okay? So what about the quadratic formula? Let, let's pick a really hard one and, and do a quadratic formula uh, problem. So let, let's just pick one like this. Okay, so what do I do? Clear the fractions, multiplying through by what? Six, okay. So if I multiply everything through by 6, what am I going to get? Okay, negative 2x squared minus 7x equals 3x squared plus 1. 
okay, let's just push everything left. I mean, we could push it. What are our options here? We could push everything left or right. And ultimately, we're going to want to have a positive coefficient of x squared. That's really important. But because we're going to put it in standard form, that's not a big deal, right? If I end up with a negative coefficient of x squared, if a is negative, what do I do? Yeah, let's multiply by negative 1. Just change all the signs, right? So I'm going to do it that way just so you can see that additional step. So let's push everything this way. If your instinct was to push everything to the right, that's probably better, honestly, because then you start off with a positive number of x squareds. Uh, let's see, minus 7x minus 1 equals 0. Okay, we'll go ahead and multiply through by negative 1, which is just our, our fancy way of just changing all the signs. So that's going to give us 5x squared plus 7x minus, no, plus 1 equals 0, right? Okay, so now if we're going to use quadratic formula, we just plug and chug, right? So what is, remind me real quick, if we start off with something in the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, so quadratic equation in standard form, what's the quadratic formula? x equals negative b plus or minus square root b squared. Okay, so then all we're going to do is just plug and chug and simplify. That's it. That's the quadratic formula. It's no big deal. So then we get x equals what? What goes there? Negative 7, because b is 7, right? Plus or minus square root. b squared is minus 4 times 5 times 1, so we'll need to write the 1, divided by 10. That's it, right? Just simplify. So let's do that. Let's go through that process once. Let's go ahead and split this fraction. So I'm going to get negative 7 tenths, right? Plus or minus square root of 49 minus 20 is just 29 over 10. That's our answer in this case, right? Nothing else I can do. Square root of 29 won't simplify. Right? So I've got that answer, comma, that answer. Two real solutions. Okay? All right. Questions on that? Yep. Well, if we do that down as well, if we just write um, plus or minus. Yes, it will. Yeah, yeah. And the, and the instructions explicitly say if multiple solu solutions exist, separate them with a comma. Yeah. Okay. What were these? These were, oh, I know what these were. So these are, um, yeah, so th these, are, these are just the ones we were using the calculator, right? So the polynomial root solver, do we want to go through one of each of these? Yeah. Okay. So if you, if you pull up the calculator, if you need to grab one, go ahead. So remember, this is just the polynomial root solver is just polysmolt2. So I'm just going to pull up the app, polysmolt2. And I mean, this couldn't be easier in a way because you're just letting the calculator do all the work. Uh, we're only looking for real solutions here. I kind of wish I'd maybe not said that, but that's all we're looking for, real solutions. If there are no real solutions exist, enter false. So we go... Um, Order is 2 because it's quadratic, so the highest power of x is x squared. We're looking for real solutions, decimal, is that right? Oh, nearest hundredth, yeah, so we're rounding. So I'll just go ahead and set, uh, I'll, I'll set it at float 2, so it's just giving me decimals rounded to two places. 
Yep. Yeah. You go apps and then go down to polysmolt too. Okay, there's a little trick. If you have a ton of apps on there, just just hit, I think it already pushes alpha for you, so just push the P button, which would be uh, right there. It's the 8, I guess. So just push 8 and it'll skip down to the P's. Okay, and then all at once, and yours might not look this fancy if you don't, that's okay. If, it, if yours says a sub 2x squared plus a sub 1x plus a sub 0, and it asks you to fill in those values, same thing, right? So for us, it's going to be 1. And then if I scoot over the coefficient of x, which is might, it might be a sub 1 on yours, is going to be negative 6. And then, oh, what do I have to do? Oh, I have to hit enter. Okay. There we go. And then, oh, I guess you, on here you can even change those to, I could have made that a minus 6x. Shouldn't make any difference. And then that's just a 2. Enter. And then I just hit F5 to solve. And those are my answers. Okay. So this one is, this is, I mean, this is a really easy assignment. It's just my way of forcing you to learn how to use the app a little bit, but it's plug stuff in and let the calculator do the work for you. Okay, the other part of this, you okay with that? Okay. The other part of this is just solving graphically. So if you pull one of these up, this would just be, and I don't, you don't need to do any, any algebra here. Doing any algebra is just going to give you a chance to make a mistake. If I'm solving this graphically, I'm just going to set y1 equal to the left side, y2 equal to the right side, for example. Or I could just subtract one third x from both sides and set the whole thing equal to 0. doesn't make any difference. If I do that, I'm finding zeros. If I set the left equal to the right, I'm just going to find intersections. Let's do it that way. So I want to get out of this, so I'll hit quit. We'll go y equals. Let me clear everything out of here. How about? So Y1 is going to be the left side. So that's just going to be 2 ninths. If I don't want to go through the hassle of using the fraction template, one, one kind of good hint is just always put fractions in parentheses. And then you know you're never going to make a mistake. So 2 ninths x, whoops, oh my gosh, are you kidding me? 2 ninths x squared plus x plus 11 ninths is 1, and then 1 third x. So I can just make that x over 3 if I wanted. Or I could put the one third in parentheses too if I want to. Either way, I'm going to go ahead and hit Zoom six to start with. Right, Zoom standard. There's the first curve. There's the second curve. So what's happening? No solution, right? So my answer is false, right? Okay, makes sense. What if there had been a solution? I would have had to just go find the solutions. How would I have done that? Let me let me change let me change this bottom one just so we do get a solution. How about plus six? So if I had gotten solutions, I just would have gone gone. Whenever I want to find something from the graph, I go second calc, right? Which one do I want? Five. Okay. Uh, and then y1, I just hit enter twice, right, to verify that those are the two curves I'm intersecting. And then all I've got to do to find the left one, remember, is either just trace down or enter a value of x manually that's close to that intersection. So I'll just go ahead and trace. Wait, wait, wait. What do we do again? You, you just, you know, you go second calc intersect. You're going to hit enter twice to say that, yeah, y1 and y2 are the curves I'm trying to intersect. And then it's asking you for a guess. So you go close to an intersection and hit enter. It'll tell you the exact value. So it's at x equals negative 6.3 square. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
7. So that's one answer, right? It would be one answer for this problem. I've got to go through the same process to get the other one. So second calc intersect. Y1, first curve, yeah, yeah. So hit enter twice. And now I'm going to just type a value of x. It looks like it's about 4. So if I just type x equals 4, that's going to get me close enough to find the other one, which is 3.37. OK? No big deal. All right? Last assignment. Let's look at this guy. And these are the story problem ones. And I, I, I don't really want to help a lot with this one, just because it's not the, the I don't care how, if you can use your calculators on these. That's not the issue. The issue is I just want you to be able to set up, I want you to be able to set up a, a problem that, that matches this. Like, let, let's take this guy, for example. The area of the larger square with side length 3x is 224 square meters, greater than the area of the smaller square with side length x. What's the length of a side of the small square and the length of the side of the large square, separated by a comma? So what would I do? Maybe I want to draw a picture, right? So So everybody, get out your notebooks and just, just try this real quick. See if you can set up, see if you can draw a picture that's going to represent this. i, I got to take roll real quick. So you do that while I'm taking roll. All All right, so if we made a picture, pretty easy picture, right? It's just going to be, I've got a large square and a small square. And what do I label a side length of the large square? 3x. Small square? X. And it's telling me that the large square has an area that's 224 units greater than the area of the smaller square. So how would I write that as an equation? What do you think? What, what is the area? Let's, well, what's the area of the large square? 3x squared. 3x quantity squared, right? So the area of the large square is going to be that. But what is that? 9x squared. 9x squared. What's the area of the small square? Okay, so what's my equation going to be then? 9x squared minus 244 equals 3x squared. Okay, that's one way to do it, right? The large, or maybe it's easier to think of it this way. The large square equals the small square plus that much extra. Or I could say 9x squared minus x squared equals 224. I, you can set this up a bunch of ways, but you see that this is just going to be the difference between the two. I need that much more added to this area to give me that area, right? So now I just solve this thing. And that's a pretty easy one to solve, isn't it? Right? And it's all we're wanting on this is exact simplified answers. But what would I do to solve this? Combine like terms. Yeah, combine like terms. So I subtract x squared, 8x squared equals 224. Well, that's no big deal, right? What, what are we going to get? Uh, what am I going to do in order? Two steps. Divide by 8, square root. square root. So that's going to give me uh, 8x squared equals this. So x squared equals, what's it going to be? 28. 28. So x equals 
square root of 28. Technically, it's plus or minus, but can you have a negative value of x? No, you can't, right? So we're going to get positive square root of 28, which simplifies to what? 2, two radical 7. Okay, good. So that's, that's going to be the answer for the value of x. 3x, the length of the big, the big square is just going to be 3 times that, right? <coughs> Once in a small square first, then a large square. So we would just put in that, comma, 6 radical 7. Okay, let's just do that, make sure it works. It should, I hope it does. I don't know if I remember. I did this one, though, so let's check it. 2 radical 7, comma, 6 radical 7. Okay, yeah, it works. Okay, make sense? There was one other one I thought was kind of tricky. Not that one. That one? Where was it? That one? Where you had like a, that one, that one. Okay, let's take a quick look at this one. I, I sounds like maybe there's some questions about this. So let's two minutes. We can do it. So a small theater company currently has 195 subscribers who each pay $115 for a season ticket. Market research indicates that for each $5 increase in the cost of a season ticket, the theater company will lose 10 subscribers. Okay, by choosing only integer numbers of $5 price changes, the theater company can generate a maximum revenue of what? Okay, so, so this is revenue, how, how are we going to generate revenue? It's just going to be the number of season tickets times the cost of each season ticket, right? Yes. So what's the number of season tickets going to be? The number of season tickets is going to be 195 uh, plus, we lose 10 subscribers for every price change, right? Let's let X equal number of price changes, right? $5 changes. So then the number of season tickets is going to be 195 plus 10N, right? Or minus 10N, sorry, because they're losing. Does that make sense? Because they're losing for every increase, every time N changes by 1, if it increases by 1, the number of season ticket holders goes down by 10, right? What's going to be the cost? Well, the cost is just going to be $115 plus 5 times, I called it N, 5 times N instead of X, right? Starts off at 115 but if I increase the cost by one increment, that's going to be 5. If I increase it by two increments, it's going to increase it by 10, right? And so what is that? Well, that's my function. Right? All I've got to do is just graph that function and, and see where the maximum is, right? Maybe we'll, I'll tell you what we'll do. Why don't we, I'll finish this one up at the beginning of the class tomorrow and then you guys can do the test. Okay?